Did you ever need to connect a balanced output to both a balanced and an unbalanced input at the same time? Seems like it might be easy, but it turns out if you're not careful, there can be a nasty little gotcha in there. Well, I'm Professor Fiore, and I'm going to show you an easy way to solve this little problem. Greetings, folks. It's time to talk about a passive interface box that you can use to connect a balanced output to both balanced and unbalanced inputs at the same time. Now, you might think you can do this with just splitter cables, and it might work if you do that, but it might not. I'll explain exactly what's going on here. So here's the basic overview. I have a digital interface. It uses a quarter inch TRS, tip ring sleeve, output jack. And I need to connect that to two different things. The first is a monitor mixer, which uses a balanced input, also TRS, quarter inch. And secondarily, an unbalanced input for the playback system. As I said, you might consider using standard splitters, for example, a mono or tip sleeve TS style splitter. That'll work fine for the, unba for the unbalanced uh, input, but the balanced input, not so much. You'll get signal, but the problem is that splitter won't make use of the antiphase, the out of phase half of that differential output, that balanced output. So it's not being fully utilized, all right? I mean, you will get signal, but mm, what are you going to do, okay? On the other hand, you might think, well, I'll just use the stereo style, in other words, the TRS splitter, okay? And that way I'll get what I need um, in my balanced input, and then, you know, the, the unbalanced just doesn't use it. Now, that might work. It all depends on the design of the jack in the equipment, it might not work. So what do you do? I mean, you don't want something that, you know, depending on what you're plugging it into, what those jacks are, are you know, how they're made, right? Um, you want something that's proper all the time, okay? So what I propose is a simple custom splitter box. Now, you take care to build this thing. It'll be, you know, it'll be around forever, basically, if you know how to build one of these things. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. It turns out to be relatively simple, right? There's no uh, power required. It's a passive thing. It's not an active thing. Yes, you could build a differential amplifier and then have multiple outputs for it, but you really don't need to do that. Standard uh, digital audio interfaces will have more than enough output current to drive a couple of different inputs, right? That by itself won't be a problem. So let's take a look at what we're really doing here. First, when I say the word balanced, you might think of this, right? I know I certainly do. I think of an XLR, right? Now, in my particular case, and is very common now, you would find balanced perhaps with XLRs, but more commonly nowadays you see these TRS-style quarter-inch jacks being used because they take up less space. So if you have a multi-output um, interface, you know, maybe an eight-output interface, let's say, um, that's going to take up much less space on the back of the panel than if you're using standard XLRs. So we move along to those. Oh, by the way, before I go any further, I should mention that if you do have XLR-style outputs, uh, or inputs for that matter, you can use what I'm about to explain you just have to do um, a little bit more work on the drilling aspects to get these things uh, in rather than the, the quarter inch style. Quarter inches are nice because you just make you know, one hole for them and you're done. In any case, this is what we're looking at, right? Here we have the stereo. A lot of people just call the stereo, but TRS is in this application is a better way of referring to it, tip ring sleeve, quarter inch connector. And over here is the unbalanced version, the tip and sleeve. So the way this works is that the sleeve part, right, over here, 
That's the common. That's the ground. The tip is the hot signal. That's, of course, all you need for unbalanced. For balanced, you also need the anti-phase, the out-of-phase half of the differential signal, and that's what's on the ring. So this is what we have for uh, connectors, right? These are the plugs. Now let's take a look at the jacks that go along with this. So I'm using high-quality Switchcraft. I like Switchcraft. They don't pay me. I've been using Switchcraft uh, connectors for a very, very long time. I like them because they're robust. They work really well. They are expensive compared to a lot of the, uh, the cheapy stuff you get online, but they work. And for me, reliability is paramount, right? I don't want to build something and then have to futz with it, you know, two months down the road or a year down the road. I want it to work and always work. I want to plug something in and go and do what I need to do. So here we have on this side the uh, TS jack, and on this side we have the TRS jack. So what you see, right, and over here are two connectors, and over here you see three. So again, it's tip sleeve and tip ring sleeve. Now, what you'll notice is the sleeve is basically just taking up the, uh, the space of sort of the barrel, if you will. All right, so that'll just make a connection on that. And then the tip, we have this sort of spring kind of uh, piece of metal. So when the uh, plug comes in here, this will contact the tip. That's the same thing we see over here, but we have a secondary one, and this is going to contact the ring. Okay, so we have three connections again, tip, ring, sleeve. So the standard connection, of course, would be to have a TS plug and a TS jack and a TRS uh, plug and a TRS jack. And that's what we see here. So you can see exactly how this works. So, you know, here's the barrel coming in. This is just making connection over here. And then we have the, uh, this again, this sort of like spring metal piece that's contacting the tip. All right, and that just comes out to a little connector and off we go. And over here we have that same thing. It's kind of, uh, I placed it in the back here because I wanted to point out the ring bit. Here's the second piece and you can see how that contacts on the ring. All right, so, you know, so far, fairly simple, right? Not too, uh, not too mind-bending. But here's the problem, and that is combining these two. In other words, what happens when you put a TS plug and a TRS jack? All right, so here's the stereo TRS uh, jack. Here's the plug, but this is only the, the sort of unbalanced version, and what you notice is that what was the ring is now actually contacting the barrel. In other words, you're common. You have effectively, by doing this, shorted out the ring connection. So if you go and use a TS splitter, right, an unbalanced Y cable, basically, what ends up happening is that works fine for the connection over to the balance, for the unbalanced input, excuse me, but for the balanced, well, this thing just, sorry, there's going to be no ring, okay? There's going, there's going to be no ring. This thing doesn't exist, right? The ring is here, but there's nothing to contact it. So you're not making best use of your balanced input. If that makes sense, right? If not, here, you're, you're just saying that this thing doesn't exist. So the ring is not connected to anything. So you've got one half of your differential amplifier that's just seeing, you know, nothing, air, right? It's not working. Now here's the real gotcha, is if you said instead, hey, I'm going to use, um, instead of a TS Y cable, a TS splitter, I'm going to use a TRS splitter. In other words, like a headphone splitter. So I have one jack and I can get two pair of headphones in it, that kind of splitter. All right, so you take the TRS for, for your balance, you plug that in, that seems to be fine, right? Because this piece is going to contact the ring. And then you plug this TS plug into this jack, and it winds up shorting out this, right? And when I say this, I mean what, what would have been the ring. Is that a problem? Yeah, think about it. It's just a Y cable. 
So the two tips are connected together, the two sleeves are connected together, and the two rings are connected together. So in this case, because you put this uh, plug in here, what would have been the ring is now being forced to ground, which, guess what, is connected back to the other half of the Y splitter. So both of them, both the balanced and the unbalanced, effectively are unbalanced now. So you're not making good, uh, good use of your balanced input. Ooh, ick. Now you might think, well, what if, you know, what if I use just um, in my TRS splitter, what if I use a TRS cable for the unbalanced input? And you would think, well, you know, that's not really required, but you know, we would get rid of the shorting situation. Well, maybe, and this is the gotcha that I was referring to, maybe if you have this kind of jack, this open frame style jack, it will work, right? Because you'll bring this, this uh, TRS jack in here instead of a TS, uh, excuse me, plug, instead of a TS plug. Um, and this won't, this, this uh, connector won't short out because it'll just be connecting to, to, to this point, but it's not connected to anything, right? So, hey, no, no uh, you know, no fault, no, no, no problem. But who says the, the, uh, the jack over here has to be of this style? There are other styles that I have seen, particularly plastic ones. Okay, they have these you know, all plastic versions. And sometimes they have kind of what looks like a leaf spring sort of affair that connects for the sleeve. And the end result there is it will perhaps go not only across the sleeve, but also across the ring. And that winds up shorting and you're back to the original problem. Okay. So unless you want to go in, you know, inside the um, device and rip it out, you know, rip out that, that uh, jack and put in this, that potential solution of just using TRS cables for both is not going to work. Like I said, so it might work, it might not work. It all depends. And I didn't want to deal with that. You know, I just want this thing to work all the time. It doesn't matter what the jack actually looks like. So you can't really buy, um, you know, that kind of a splitter. You're going to have to make one. But it turns out making one is not that nasty. You just have to remember what the connection rules are. All right. All you're going to need there's a little hobby box like this, right? So this is just your basic die cast aluminum, um, like stomp box, right? For a guitar effect box, that kind of thing. And, you know, I picked up one of these. Here's, here's my uh, quarter inch jacks. And it turned out that I couldn't get the exact size I wanted. In other words, if it had the depth that I needed, it didn't mm, quite have the, the, le the length. It was a bit too long. So what I decided to do, since I had the little bit of extra length, uh, I grabbed a couple of RCA connectors. That way, if some point in the future, instead of a quarter inch unbalanced, I also need an RCA style, which is fairly common with consumer audio, I would have that. And I could just, you know, piggyback on there and off I would go. So you take this. All you're really going to need is a, a drill press to, you know, drill out the holes you're going to need. Because these, all of these jacks only require one hole each. So that's kind of handy, you know, like I said. At the outset, you could use XLRs, but XLRs are going to require, for the most part, you know, a, a much larger hole for the main body and then a couple of holes for the mounting uh, screws, the, the machine screws for those. So it's a little bit more involved as far as trying to drill this out. In this case, I'm only going to need to cut eight holes, and I'm done. All right? So the wiring for this sleeve is ground. It's the common. And that's true for all of your connectors. So you connect all the sleeves on the TRS and the TS and the outer shell of the RCA, if you're going to use them, you connect all of those together. Now, people will say, well, you know, the box itself is aluminum, it's conductive, can I use that? Well, yeah, you can. I like to wire them anyway, just in case over time... I get a little oxidation or something like that, right? Maybe something gets a little loose, I don't notice it, whatever. So I like to hardwire them all together anyway. But yes, that box is going to act as a shield around the whole thing. 
Now, the T or tip is your hot in phase lead. So you connect all of the TR TRS tips to all of the TS tips, okay? And that's also the connection that you use for the center pin of the RCA. That's the hot pin of the, of the RCA. Now I'm gonna do two channels, right? So one side of this is gonna have all the tips in the RCA center connected, and then the same thing on the other side. All those tips and the RCA will be connected, right? Unlike the ground, which is everybody, okay? Finally, you've got the ring connector, and that only works on the balanced, so that's only used on the TRS connector. You connect, um, in this case, there's one input and one output for the TRS, so you're going to connect those two together on, in my case, channel A and channel B. You don't connect those in any way, shape, or form to any unbalanced connector. Whether it's a TS or an RCA, it doesn't matter. Ring is the anti-phase signal, right? It's the out-of-phase part of the differential signal. You do not use that at all if it's an unbalanced connection. Okay? Fairly straightforward. So, you take that top plate... You drill eight holes into it, like I did here. You pop these in, and I happen to use the top. You know, usually this would be the bottom of a stomp box, but I call this the top, uh, simply because it's easier to solder everything, right? Instead of doing the other side, right, the back side in this case, which would normally be the top of a stomp box, um, you know, you got to get your soldering iron there. In, inside there, it can be a little pain, or, you know, you can solder it outside the box and then mount them inside, but, you know, it's just a lot easier just to do the, the lid, right? Everything's open. You put everything in there, screw it all down, right? flip it over so, th so this, this is the bottom now, and the whole thing is just wide open. And then you can take your uh, appropriate wires and connect everything, everything together. So in audio, black is uh, ground. could also use green. And then we use white f uh, or red. Okay, excuse me. White, I said that backwards, white for the tip, and then red for the ring, right? Red ring. That's a little mnemonic you can kind of use for that, right? A little alliteration, red ring. Red ring, red ring. Okay. Um, so you just, like I said, you wire these up. So the the if this pair over here was the input, then, like I said, you could think of a daisy chain for the sleeves. This one to 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 this one. Okay, that kind of a thing, or you know, however you want to do it. And then the the tips, right? Tip of this goes to this, goes to this, goes to this. And then the same thing for this, the B channel, tip of this goes to this, to this, to this. And then the rings, the out of phase, from this to this, and then from this to this. And you're done. So my input signal, which is you know, right, the output of my interface box, that comes into here, and then this. And this would be the outputs back to my monitor mixer, which is also balanced. And then over here, I have the jump back to the audio playback system. Okay? Beautiful! No power, no batteries, no semiconductors. It's just simple wires and jacks and stuff. Okay? And like I said, if you use quality components, this thing will basically last forever. So, simple solution. You know, and hey... If you're, um, if you're not good with soldering, now's as good a time as any to learn. It's a, it's a good skill to have. And uh, if you don't have a bench press, find a friend who does. I would not do this with a hand drill. Um, not unless you like, you know, ellipses instead of circles <laughs> for, the, for the holes. Um, so there's that, right? That make, might be a minor complication for you. But there you go. Okay. Uh, boxes, if you're interested in costs, currently boxes like this are probably going to be somewhere around $10, $12 US. The jacks, like I said, the Switchcraft jacks are probably going to be a little pricey, probably around five or six. And you know, similar for um, a decent quality um, RCA. Don't chintz on these things. You know, don't go after the cheapest one. You can find things that look an awful lot like a quality TRS or TS jack, but you know the metal is a lot thinner. The connections won't stand up. Spend a couple extra dollars. Get something that's going to last you. All right? Okay. I hope you found this useful. Until next time, this is Professor Fiori saying, take care and have a good one.